Right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, this is Signcraft, and I'm here with Mr. Eric. We are auditioning the idea of an audio only uh, form of communication. Uh, some might call it a podcast. I've, I've heard that that term thrown around. I've heard about uh, those. You, you've heard about these these newfangled things. Uh, yeah, I, for folks that don't, so I guess we're going to probably throw this up on our respective YouTube channels just to check the pulse, see if you all think it's a, a worthwhile endeavor before we invest too much energy into it. But, um, in the future, it might be something you could download onto your iPhone or Google Android device or whatnot. Um, but yeah, we're, we're sort of playing with naming ideas right now. I think that the leading contender is, uh, audio files anonymous. Um, but you know, love feedback on that as well. But anyway, just to kind of before we dive in to, uh, to some of the things we want to chat about today, I thought it'd be helpful just to share a little background. And, and I guess, Mr. Jared, I'll start with you. Tell me a little bit about kind of how you got how, how did you fall into the addictive cycle of audio gear, buying, selling, listening, obsessing about how, how did you get pulled into this hobby? Yeah, for me, it really started with uh, gaming. So I don't know, it's probably been about like 12 years ago, I bought like a gaming headset and thought it was crap. And I was like, there's got to be something better. And yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. I, I come at it from like a budget friendly perspective, or at least I used to. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> These days, I'm maybe not sticking to that as well. But um, so I did a lot of modding of cheaper headphones and things like that just to get started and not spend a lot of money because I was a poor college student and didn't have any money. And uh, it's a I guess good now not to spend money. Yeah, I guess now I'm all grown up and have a real job, so uh, my budget has grown. Uh, but I still am kind of fighting the addiction to constantly try things and upgrade. So I was trying enough stuff that I thought I would start a YouTube channel and and share you know some of those experiences with people and try to help the community out a little bit and having a little bit of traction with that and have been enjoying it. So um, you know, love love making those videos and watching other people's videos, which is how I found you. So what about you? How'd you get started? Uh, yeah. So I guess sort of similar story, you know, kind of growing up, I always liked gear, like tech stuff, gadgets, whatnot, always kind of attracted to that stuff and audio, you know, when sort of, uh, 5.1 for home came around, I got really excited about that for like watching movies and like a projector back in the day and the subwoofer and all the speakers wired out and sort of like got really into gear at that point. Um, then kind of got over it. And then, uh, I don't know, I got into vinyl. Like I somehow fell into that trap. Um, and as I started listening to records and being like, you know what, this genuinely sounds like better to me, or it's a more enjoyable listen. We won't get into whether, you know, vinyl or digital is, is truly better, but just, I was enjoying it so much that I started tinkering with the gear behind it. You know, what is a better cartridge sound like? What is a better phono stage sound like? What do better speakers sound like? And, uh, I was having a lot of fun with that. A lot of fun really actually getting into vintage gear and, and a lot of tube based stuff. And the, the, the mystery of tube started to, uh, you know, reveal itself to me. And I got very excited about like, little low watt single ended tube stuff and high efficiency speakers and, you know, single driver speakers with no crossover, just like really p kind of purest stuff. Um, and then, uh, the pandemic hit <laughs> and, uh, I, and I had a kid that, and oh, that was like, those things that might have an impact on your life. Those two things. I don't know. <laughs> they at least changed the way you listen to music at home, maybe. Um, so yeah, I'd always had like decent pairs of headphones uh, at work, but I was, I sort of felt like headphones had a ceiling, like, hey, spend, you know, spend X dollars, but like, you know, it's a ceiling. The rest is like diminishing returns to where it's just not even fruitful. But, you know, as tinkers will tinker, um, being trapped at home and not being able to play music too loud focused me from my two channel world to my headphone world. And it's been a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so much like you, I think I just started kind of trying so much stuff that I was like, you know what? There's, I'm trying some weird stuff that I haven't really seen a lot of coverage for, and I'd love to just get more stuff in the world out there about this, whether I'm going to keep this pair of headphones or not. Like, like I got so much from finding videos of people talking through what their experiences was, and it helped me a lot in my buying decisions, and I just felt like I sort of owed it back to to share back some some stuff with everybody. 
Yeah, too, it makes you feel a little less guilty about going through a bunch of stuff. If you're like, well, I recorded a video about it, so, you know. <laughs> At least that's what I tell myself sometimes anyway. I, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I don't know how you are. Sometimes I find myself buying gear anymore just because I'm like, oh, that'd make a good video. <laughs> and maybe that's the wrong way to do it, but. I don't know. I think there's something nice about like I. I do hold myself to sort of a standard of listening before I'll make a video. Like I need enough, I need, I need enough time with it. And so there have been things that at first I got and I was like, eh. And then because I sort of forced myself, I'm like, no, you're going to spend your requisite hours. You're going to try this thing on enough different amps. You're going to like do your homework. You find that unlock. You're like, oh, but with this and that thing, this actually sounds really cool. So in some ways having that deliverable for myself of the video made me uh, a better listener. Yeah, I agree with that, you know, and that was actually one of the things that I wanted to talk about because it's if it's early 2022 um, now, which is crazy to me, sounds like the future, but um, Happy New Year. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about like things that we've like learned, I don't know, along the way, learned this past year as we've been trying out all this this gear. And that was one of the things that was on my list to talk about is just I don't know, the idea of how to listen to a headphone, how to approach a new headphone, new gear, you know, um, one of the things that I feel like I do is I, I'll listen when I first get it and I'll kind of make an initial impression and then I leave it for a little while and then I'll pick it up again later and see if I have the same impression or if it's changed. And shockingly, I, I would say a lot of the times it changes, you know, um, if I try it on a different piece of gear or if I try it you know, change the signal chain a little bit or change the genre of music, I can go from really hating a headphone. And then the next time I pick it up, I'm like, oh, I've, I'm hearing something different this time. And my thought process kind of evolves a little bit. So, you know, just that idea of giving a headphone kind of multiple tries and multiple settings and, you know, synergy is another thing that I just, it's blowing my mind how much difference it makes now, especially now that I'm trying like upper end stuff. I've, I've really noticed some phenomenal pairings, you know? Yeah, I, I think both those sort of fall under the don't judge a book by its cover category, right? Where like the first, you know, even like from the aesthetic of a headphone, like there's a, there's a lot of, or from something you've read online or whatnot. I, I, I it's very hard, right. To go into putting a pair of headphones on as a truly blank slate, right? Because it's like, you're going to have done a little research. You didn't just open your wallet for something you didn't know anything about. Like you're going into it with some expectations of like, Oh, well this guy whose opinion I normally agree with thought it was, you know, kind of cold or this person. It's like, it's really hard to set that stuff aside, but it's so important too, because you know, the only, the only thing that matters in all of this is how it sounds to you. And sometimes finding your own truth <laughs> It's hard. Like sometimes there's things where I get and I'm like, I am determined to like the thing. Like the the Meze Empyrean when those came out, I was like, just the aesthetic, the build story, the technology story. Like I was like, these headphones are going to be the be all end all headphone to me. They came in this little case. They just presented so beautifully and they are great headphones. I mean, they better be. They're super expensive. But I, it took me like weeks to just admit to myself that they were not making me that happy mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and that there were other headphones that were cheaper that were making me much happier. Um, so I think finding your own audio truth is, is something I don't have the answer to, but certainly a kind of lesson I've learned last year that I'm trying to figure out how to keep, keep, keep that honesty for myself about what I'm hearing. Well, that's why we're here, right? Is cause we're like, we're searching out there for stuff and I don't, you know, I don't have the answer either. Like I said, I'll, I'll listen to one headphone one day and think it's great. And then the next day I'll pick it up and I'll put it on something. I'm like, I don't like this at all. And like, I wonder what I was thinking when I was listening to it last time, you know? And yeah. so I, I don't know my, I don't know if my taste changed from time to time, if it's all just source gear or whatever music comes up. But I mean, I definitely have mixed feelings a lot of the time. Um, yeah. And I think the best thing that I've just started to tell myself is just, don't I, I try not to look I mean as much as possible I've tried to kind of disregard what other people say about anything and I just try to go into it with am I getting joy out of it do am I enjoying my music do I want to listen to more music am I listening to more music than I was previously you know uh, and so that's really what it comes down 
two for me. And, um, you know, I, like no, I, I, that that's right on, right. It's like, you have to have what your measure is and we can talk about, uh, how fast the headphone is or how much bass extension there is or, you know, whatever we can, we can talk about a lot of the more objective sort of ways of understanding audio and our experience as humans consuming audio. But at the end of the day, you have to have some measure for like what stays in your system and what goes. And I think joy or finding additional time to listen, finding yourself putting the headphones back on. Those are great. Those are great tools to say like this. Maybe this belongs. Maybe this is what I what I really need in my system. I mean, maybe I'm showing my hand here a little bit, but my opinion would be that any sort of metric like that of just like use and enjoyment is uh, way more useful than any type of Synad measurement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't have a plastic like dummy head in your house with you know, microphones in its ears? I you did at on? one point in time. I did at one point in time have a measurement system, and I toyed with that a little bit, and I just thought it was a lot of work, and I didn't feel like it really told me anything that my ears didn't already tell me. And yeah. uh I just decided it wasn't for me. I just, it was, there's, you know, there's a couple of ways to approach this hobby. I mean, there's more than a couple, but right. Are you a music based listener? Are you a gear based listener? Like, are you a measurement based listener? Like, and so I kind of tried to do the measurement stuff and, uh, I just, I thought it took the fun out of it, honestly. Like I just didn't want to mess with it. And like, when it comes down to it, like I want to listen to music and if I'm doing a bunch of stuff that is gear related, but I don't get to listen to music. Like for me, I, that mean that meant I was missing the mark. So I got, I moved very far away from that. <laughs> yeah. I probably have like one foot in each camp a little bit, right? Like I really do enjoy the like research and learning about a thing. And like, why does that sound that way? And like, what if, happens if you swap this, this ear pad or like, what's, what's the actual science of what's happening inside that, you know, uh, air pocket around your ears or like, what's, so everyone thinks this cable sounds better. Well, that sounds like BS. Like what, what is this cable made out of? Unobtainium? Like how could it be, how could it be better? And like, oh, well, it's actually, you know, this material is more conductive. So that might not be better, but it's certainly going to change the sound signature. So it's like on one hand, I love all that stuff. And I love, I'm very thankful for the people who want to do the measurement. Like I'm yeah, so happy yeah. we have them. Cause I do sometimes look at those graphs and say like, oh, I can see what I'm hearing. And that's sort of satisfying, but I'm with you. I don't want to do it. And I think there's times where I slip too far into the like, you know, nerd alert category and I start to lose track of music, which is, is really my love. And like sitting down, listening to a great record on a good amp with some nice speakers and just being totally consumed by it is, is that's the goal. Like I'm always trying to get back to that euphoric yeah. moment of like, man, that sounds good. And man, I love that performance. And just that it's that I think when, the quality of what you're hearing in terms of its technical performance and then the quality in terms of the music and how much it resonates with you, just what your preference, like when those two things come together and lock, that's like, that's when my brain explodes. Right. Well, and, and what's cool is like, it happens sometimes in ways that you wouldn't expect, you know? Um, for instance, I've got a 5XX, right? Cheaper Hi-Fi Men Drop collab right now. And when I first got that thing, I thought it sounded dry and sterile and I didn't like it at all. And then I kind of left it for a while, came back to it, paired it up randomly with a Dragonfly Black, which I picked up like cheap. And I also didn't like how that sounded with whatever I tried it with first. And then together they sounded like excellent. And I was like, wow, this is like an under $200 setup and I am loving it. You know what I mean? So it's just finding, just kind of randomly finding that stuff along the way, as opposed to forcing it Yeah, seems to work better for me. Whenever I'm like, oh, this has to go with this and that ought to sound perfect. Like, I feel like I'm not very good at that. <laughs> it's, it's more like, it's more like I just randomly plug stuff in and eventually I, I hit a spot like with my ears where I'm like, Ooh, that sounds good. And then I just listen <laughs> to it more. Yeah, I, I'm uh, sort of, you know, just imagining you just going through, just plugging thing, you know, plugging the headphones into random things around your house, just to be like, how about that? Is that good? What's with that? It's a blender. No, it doesn't work. It's, it's honestly, it's not too far from what actually <laughs> happens. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain things where, like, you know, I, I mentioned I'm really into tube tube based gear, valve gear, and I, I, I've just had so many good experiences where you 
you do get the right like tube pairing for what you're trying to solve in your chain and you're just like wow eureka and that does take some intention that one's a balance of like definitely some luck <laughs> but also some like i gotta go and look and see you know if i'm if i've got a rectifier and an input tube and two power tubes like which one of those do i need to change to affect the thing that i'm hearing that i don't like and then which way do i want to push it and then let's try to go find a tube that has those qualities more than the one that i'm currently running so that's like you know a bit of research a bit of quote unquote science <laughs> and then you plug it in and you hold your breath and you tell yourself that you nailed it and then an hour later you admit that you didn't and you go get another one and, and you begin again but um but yeah I, I love that hunt well and i think too it's like I think thinking, you know, a lot of us get into this and, and we go through this stage of trying a bunch of things, thinking that we're going to find the one. And I think, you know, one of the big takeaways from this last year for me is like, there is no one. Ah. I'm never, I'm never going to have the one. Like I no. will have a few, I will, it will be the one for a little while and then I'll have <laughs> another one. You know what I mean? I just, I've given up on the end on the end and I, and just embrace the journey, I guess is where I'm at. There is no end game. There is only game. Yeah. That's how it is for me. I don't know. Do you feel differently? You think the perfect no. ones out there waiting for you? No. I mean, I'd love to believe that. Everyone wants to believe that it's, it's still such a nice idea. And I think especially when you're, when you're feeling very addicted and, and very like you're churning a lot in this hobby to tell yourself that there's a purpose and that you're trying to get to some magical combination is it's a nice thing to tell ourselves, but I think maybe people with more self-control uh, already found that the magic combination was like 16 combinations ago. <laughs> yeah. Cause they just stopped and they're like, you know, this is good enough. Like that's, that's the only way you can do it in this hobby is just be like, I'm going to get rid of everything else. So I have nothing to AB this with, and I'm going to just enjoy music again. Do you, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you buy stuff you've already owned? I have done that. Um, it's uh, it's rare, but it's happened. Mm. See, it's I happened. that's my problem. Because like, uh, you and I both buy a lot of used stuff, right? That was kind of like one of the things yeah, that we yeah. had in common. But what I found, in, obviously, if we had endless amounts of money, maybe we'd just keep them all. But um, in order to fund new things, you sell old things. But then I find myself going, oh, man. I wonder how that headphone would sound with this amp <laughs> and then I buy it again and then sell it again eventually. But you know, yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff I'd love. I, I'm tempted to get again. Cause it's like when I heard that two years ago, you know, my, the points of reference I had were so, uh, so much smaller, right? I just had so much less yeah. uh, experiential data to draw from, to understand a thing. And sometimes I'm like, man, I'd love to hear that with all the context I have now and, and see if I still feel the same way or, or if my impressions would be significantly different. Yeah, me too. And again, I think I think it's a little bit of both for me, right? I think my tastes change, uh, changes over time and I go through kicks of certain things. And then also it's because my gear is always constantly changing. You know, there's new combinations to try that weren't there before. So, I mean, I guess, I guess it's not like a big deal to buy stuff for a second or third time. It's just, it's, I just, I just want to know that if it's a weird quirk that I just do, or if other people have that problem too. Again, it's an addiction We're we're trying to, we're trying to share experiences. Yeah. To help so um, here, right? we talked a little bit about kind of takeaways from last year or re revelations, things that have stuck with you. What, what you're making any new year audio gear resolutions moving forward? Anything you're, you're sort of promising yourself for this for 22? Yeah, promising is maybe a strong <laughs> word, um, but but my if I were to lay out one specific goal, it would be to keep less gear right. on hand and maybe progress a little more slowly through gear. There are there are times where I just accumulate so much just so quickly. Whether it's just I'm I'm hunting for something specific or just I randomly come across several good deals at once. And so like right now I have, let me count them on my desk here. One, two, three, four, five. I've got six amps sitting on my desk right now. And, um, and none of them are cheap. And <laughs> I don't, 
I don't really have any reason why I have all of them except that, like, I wanted to try them and I got good deals on a couple of them. But I feel like it almost puts it puts an unreasonable amount of pressure on me. You know, it almost makes it less enjoyable when I do that because then I feel pressure to, oh, I got to get this listened to and I want to do a video about it. and But I got to get it sold, too, because I don't want too much money invested. So, yeah. I think my main goal is just to slow my pace a little bit and maybe, you know, exercise a little more restraint when it comes to trying new gear and purchasing new gear. And even if I can manage to do that a little bit, I think it'll, I think it'll relate to overall more enjoyable experiences yeah, in the hobby. That, that... What about what about you? I don't know. Do you you have that same I do, problem? I do have that same problem. I think when there's a bunch of gear around, um, it takes away from it because it's it's like, I I do feel you know sort of bad for the piece of gear that's not getting time. Maybe there's a thing that I really want to listen to that I'm not listening to as much because I'm feeling like I have to listen to something else. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, I, I guess it's tough, right? Because on one hand, I'm saying, well, you have to make time for new things, right? You have to like spend a bit of time with them over some over some calendar time to see how you ultimately feel about them and how well they ultimately fit within your system. Uh, and then on the other hand, I'm saying like, well, I don't want to make time for a bunch of new gear. <laughs> I'm sort of starting to know really what I like and, you know, kind of just want to spend my limited amount of listening time on that. Uh, so yeah, I guess the only other variable is just pace pacing. And, and if you can, if you can slow it down a little, reduce the pace and, and have less things on the desk, so to speak, then yeah. It seems like you can apply your time in a way that's going to be more satisfying. Well, and the other thing that I'm juggling, and I think you're probably juggling too, just my understanding of, of you know, people sending you gear. Like I think both of us are getting several people sending us some things to try. And, you know, all that stuff comes with like a bit yeah. of a deadline with it. And maybe it's not like a hard deadline, but it's still, you know, if you've got somebody else's $2,000 headphone – you know, you don't want to <laughs> neglect the fact that, like, somebody's being very generous and letting you borrow it. So you want to kind of do it efficiently. At least that's how I feel about yeah. it. So so I feel like that adds another dimension, too. And for me, it's hard for me to say no to people. And maybe I should. And maybe that should be a resolution, too. But if somebody, like, contacts me and is like, hey, I want to send you this $1,500. Yeah, yeah, great. Like, here's, okay. here's my address. Looking forward <laughs> please, to it. Please yeah, do. I'm with you. Yeah, please do. Please do. But maybe I – I mean, maybe I do that, you know, too much at yeah, some points in time. You don't want the, the um, hobby to happen to you. You know, you want <laughs> – you... Right. Yeah. That's maybe at a the, good way At the to, same time, I think this is probably to think about not – if you don't have a YouTube channel, this is probably not a problem you share. Um, although maybe you have your friends throwing oh, gear at you, true. which is also yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I mean, just just thinking about what what I want out of out of this hobby next year or this year, um, I do want more just dedicated listening time where I'm not swapping cables yeah. and have three amps powered up where I'm swapping the headphones. Around. I, I, I want to make more time for just enjoying the music and listening listening to the gear as well, but listening like more dedicated, more focused, less A B testing, less moving, less plugging things in and out. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good goal. Yeah. More music focused and less gear focused, I think, would be a big goal for me. And I want to try, you know, more music, more new music. Like I, that's that's certainly a goal for me too. Is like try to find some new gems as as far as music goes and expand my, you know, my repertoire and my library. How do you how do you review? Do you do I, test tracks like the same ones, or do you just listen to whatever you want? I at do the both. Time, yeah, or? for sure. I um. I have a you know a, a never ending playlist of songs that I think have interesting telling audio qualities. Many that I've heard hundreds of times, so they are a reference for my brain and help me understand what's happening with a particular change in gear. Like oh now like there's more you know space in between the upper mids and the you know upper treble, and I can sort of hear more space there, or there's more definition coming in now. Um, and I think that's helpful, like having a set of tracks that are are really familiar. Um, but then, yeah, I also, like I said, I try to spend enough time with stuff. So it's like, that's, that's the headphone I'm listening to while I work for the next week. And like, you know, whatever new music I want to be checking out that week, I'm checking it out in the context of that headphone. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a mixed bag. What about you? 
Yeah, I I mean, pretty much the same way. I don't have any, like, real specific test tracks as much as just kind of go-to playlist of just music I enjoy, you know? So songs, again, that I've heard dozens or hundreds of times, so I know how they're supposed to sound and how they usually make me feel and and things like that. But, um, I, again, I, I, I try to expand my music too. Like I really trying to search for some new music and, and find new stuff. So it's a mix, again, a mixed bag, I would say for me as well. But again, I don't want to listen to the same yeah. five songs over and over again. You know what I mean? I mean, there are songs that once I find a new song, like sometimes I do want to listen to it just over and over and over again, but I don't want to force myself to do that. Right. That's anything that takes away my enjoyment from doing this stuff. Like I, I'm trying not to, you know, force that on myself. I'm trying to just give myself the leeway to enjoy myself as I'm testing and trying things out and and making videos and making podcasts. Yeah. Like, I just want to make sure I'm having fun. Are you having the whole fun time right I'm now? Doing it, fun. You know, we having fun. Good. I am having okay, fun. You check I in with yourself, fun, right? Well, this is no, no. This is why we need we need to start these things, right? Is because uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't have a local. I don't have a local Audiophiles Anonymous group that I can go talk with people about this stuff with. So that's why it is really fun for me to get a chance to have some of these so discussions. So I wanted to um, – yeah, we were talking about sort of new music. How do you find new music? What's your what's your typical path to, to finding new bands, new tracks, new stuff you want to listen to? Yeah, probably my favorite way is NPR Tiny oh, yeah. Desk concerts. So oh, yeah. you a fan? I – I love them, man. I just I found so many great artists from that. So that's that's kind of just my the constant in my life of like whenever one of those comes out, like I always try it. Like it immediately goes on my watch later list, and I will at some point listen to it. Do you, um, I don't necessarily listen to them all, but you know I'll I'll at least start them and because they it's such an eclectic mix. Like certainly not everything on there is gonna hit your hit your groove, but you know, I'll try them and it at least expose myself to it and then make a decision. But that's my number one. I also, I mean, just on, uh, I'm, I'm a big hi-fi guides forum guy. So, um, that's just kind of my form of choice, I guess, for chatting and, and discussing things. And so they have a listening to tonight thread that I hop on and just kind of run through every now and then and try that out. Um, I mean, those are probably my two main ways. What about I definitely, you? I definitely like uh, all of NPR's music stuff. They're all songs considered. Uh, podcast has a bunch of variants to it of like New Music Fridays and then longer form and guest hosts and stuff. So that's a good source. Um, I'm big Bandcamp um, listener. If y'all if y'all don't get down on Bandcamp, it's pretty fantastic. Um, just there's a a good bit of discoverability there because you can sort of. Would you pl- tell me a little bit about that? Because I just heard I just I just watched a streamer review thing earlier and that was mentioned. What you want to give me a, like give like the thirty second sure yeah so Bandcamp, Bandcamp is basically is. a site that allows artists to sell their music to end users without really a middleman. I mean Bandcamp's the middleman, but their uh, their fee structure is very minimal compared to like how much money somebody like working through. Uh, you know, a label would end up getting for for their music. So you can buy it digitally. Mm. I buy a lot of vinyl there. So there's a lot of people there who are like, um, and there actually are some labels as well on Bandcamp too. So it's not anti-label. It's just a, a kind of more direct connection to the artist and where the money ends up in the artist's pocket. But what you see is a lot of like smaller artists that you might not necessarily discover on like, Spotify or something like they're just not going to raise up in the algorithms mm. high enough to kind of get noticed because they might be starting out. So for a lot of, I like a lot of jazz, a lot of like newer currently being made jazz and a lot of that's happening uh, in Europe and in the UK and they have a, they're a pretty international um, collective in general, but they're, they're pretty big in Europe. And so just find all kinds of cool stuff there where it's like, here's this little jazz group I would have never ever came across through another channel they did, they did like a, a, a band now, camp weekly uh, kind of podcast as well, which is pretty fantastic for discovery. Yeah, that yeah. highlights well curated. Yep, highlights new people. It, and and I mean, I assume you can just mm-hmm. stream stuff too yeah. from Most there. Most artists will just stream stuff without giving them any money if you want. Um, and then if you you know want to buy their album, you can sort of 
get it and you can download, you know, high quality flack and all that stuff for people who care, or you can just stream it from the site. Yeah, I should say too, is like another big way that I do it is just, um, I'm, I mainly use YouTube music just cause I pay for YouTube premium. So like, it's, you know, just free. So I don't, I don't, I oftentimes I'll have another service that I'm like, I kind of cycle through free <laughs> trials <laughs> as they offer them to me just so I have something to compare to. But I, I mean, I do like the discovery mix, you know, they put out like a weekly discovery mix based on your listening and things like that. So I always, I usually listen to those too and just see if there's anything there that, trips my trigger and and does that but i'll have to, the band camp thing sounds good i might have to check yeah, that yeah. Out it's a, a, it's a fun spot for discovery and, and then you know it's sort of the model of other social media where you can follow bands you like follow other listeners that seem to have similar taste to you and so you just kind of get a feed built for you of stuff stuff to check out and it's not like a daily thing for me that's more one i might go in every couple of weeks and just sort of catch up on on what's what's new what's shaken and mm. and then yeah i i do i do end up buying a lot of vinyl there which is hilarious because it's like you know i'll be buying from some australian band or some german band and like usually you're buying it in advance of the pressing and then there's like the overseas shipping time so it's like it'll be months and months and then this record will show up on my doorstep i'll be like i have no recollection of what this is or when i ordered it um so it's kind of like a, a present i give future future self future man future you that's that sounds kind of fun you know i gotta tell you i don't i don't know that we should get into it today but at one point we should do a vinyl <laughs> a talk about vinyl because i'm not sold on it um but i mean i have a turntable i have a couple of records but i just um it hasn't it hasn't lured me in yet and my wallet is happy because yeah. of that but <laughs> I mean, I feel like I could be swayed maybe in the right circumstances. I just haven't. I don't know it hasn't. I would want to do yet. that to you, honestly. <laughs> I would say just walk away. Um, and and you know I haven't met that many people who are more headphone listeners than speaker listeners who love love vinyl and for vinyl. There's some very practical reasons for that. Um, but yeah, we can we can definitely talk in a future episode about about vinyl because it's it's a topic I I care care a lot about, but I don't. I'm not really interested in trying to evangelize people for, but I'm happy to share my story if, if folks are interested in, in what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so any other any other New Year's resolutions that you have, or any big any big surprises from this past year? Big big learning moments I don't know. for I, you? I think what's interesting. So so many flagships came out last year. Like it was the year of just. Big dollar, crazy headphones from Meze, uh, Hyphamen, uh, Odyssey, Odyssey, Odyssey. Like three times over. They had a crazy year. Yeah. Um, so there's just a lot of Dan Clark audio. There's just a ton of stuff came out in that really upper, upper, you know, wallet destroying territory. And I think what's interesting is that there's still a ton of headphones from three six plus years ago that compete from a performance standpoint with the latest and greatest. So at any price, which is, which makes a used used market is excellent for past yeah, flagships. I mean, it's a really right? great I mean, time if you've been wanting to try higher end stuff because the, right. <laughs> buy an OG clear for 600 prices bucks. Are getting really pushed down. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is which is great because I mean I you've had a chance to listen to some of that stuff right because you had the LCD five right five, you got to listen yeah. to what what uh, what other ones did you get to listen to I mean did you feel did you feel like anything that you've listened to flagship wise that's new do you feel like it's I I don't know you know did it, did it grip you more than some of the older flagship stuff that you've listened to I think that what you're getting is just more and more flavors, right? You, you can definitely argue some technical performance increases here or there compared to, you know, comparably placed headphones of years before. But what I don't hear as I listen to some of the, the newer high end stuff is just some sort of revelation, just some sort of like, Oh my gosh, the old stuff is now garbage because this stuff is so great. Like you <laughs> we're I guess the lesson for me is just that we're kind of, 
we're kind of past that. You know, we're, we're I don't think we're going to have yeah. a breakthrough thing that is so differentiated that it makes everything else obsolete. I just don't see that. Like, I think we've already come so far with audio reproduction technology and with headphone technology that it's just, we're just working in the margins now. Um, or, or working on, I know you talked a lot about like LCD five, how it's like a, that the sound wasn't that big of a revelation, but it was like a complete design shift where they're, you know, they're making it lighter. They're making it more yeah. ergonomic. You know what I mean? To where it's like in a, it's a refinement stage at this point as far, but instead of a, like a brand new yeah. revelation. I mean, that, that LCD five in particular, you know, is definitely offers something different than Odyssey has historically. Um, but one of the things you note about, a company at its level of maturity now is that you, you you look at the old LCD series that were these giant round things and how they're put together, the headband system, all of it is stuff that you can do without insanely upfront, um, insanely expensive upfront um, investments in your production line. So there's just certain things in terms of how things are manufactured, like ZMF, right? ZMF uses very sort of rudimentary, you know, kind of craft oriented ways of making things. They're not better or worse, but there are limits to what you can make if you're making 100 of a thing versus if you're making 100,000 of the thing and investing in big, expensive mm -hmm. tooling and all the research you have to do around materials and the, just all this stuff you can't do when you're a little company. So as you see where Odyssey is now compared to where it was 10 years ago and like the way in which they're making headphones is dramatically different. Yeah. They've evolved as a company just as they've, as they've cornered some of the market and built yeah. up some of that. Now does following. the, yeah. you know, but again, back to the sound is the sound as revolutionary as the way in which they're making new headphones. I don't know that it is. I, like I said, I think we're kind of in the, we're in the margins now. We're just in the, the refinement territory. And I think it's really, Whenever something new comes out, people go bananas in anticipation of it, right? People lose their mind, whether it's the newest amp or the newest headphone or the newest stack at any price point. People get their wallets out. They get on the waiting list. They're ready to go. <laughs> and I guess it's like, we all got to take a beat. It's like the stuff that's out from five, well, ten years ago is still great and still enjoyable. So we got <laughs> we got to just chill. Well, yeah, and, and you know, and just because, you know, it, its technical ability is 5% better, whatever arbitrary number you want to put on it, um, doesn't mean you're yeah. going to like it better. I mean, because I had, at one point, I had the LCD2 prephaser like a 2012, and then I had like a 2019 LCD2. And I I kept the phaser, or the prephaser, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I like that one better. It wasn't, was it as accurate and... You know, is technically, you know, detailed? No, definitely not. But it didn't have the same character the old one had. You know what I mean? So it's, it, it's, it's. You just gotta, again, you gotta go for your enjoyment. And if you think the latest and greatest is gonna give you more, I think you're gonna get let down. A lot <laughs> I think, of the time. yeah, just do it. Do what you, <laughs> you know, do, but I mean, you're wrong. No, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, it's like, I, I think that chasing the spec sheet is. Maybe for some people that's great, right? If you if you if you have a measurement home at rig and uh, measurement rig at home, and you're like genuinely like eager to like dial in that perfect like waveform, and like that's that that brings you happiness, then awesome, yeah. Keep keep chasing that stuff, and 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 keep getting the thing that's got you know the point zero 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 percent lower noise floor. Um, but I, I'm with you. It's like in terms of pure enjoyment, like it would be amazing to get to listen to gear without any knowledge of it, right? Like I have a, a friend mm -hmm. in town and, and I've been supposed to like, he, he likes audio. He's got a turntable. He's got a decent set of speakers he bought off Craigslist. Um, you know, he's, he's got a good ear. He's a musician. Like he's, he's primed to be in this. He likes tech and stuff. Um, but he's just not into this space at all. And I would love to just sit him down and like play him a couple sets of, you know, headphone deck amp combos without telling him anything about who the companies are, what the price tags are, anything, and see which direction he goes. Like without any of the stuff that we all have baked into our yeah. heads. Blindfold him and just like don't <laughs> let him even touch him. Just put him on his head 
from you know and just see i i'd be super curious too i i don't know i i question myself i i'd love to just blind test myself sometime i just got to talk my wife into sitting down and doing <laughs> it but cuz i i don't know what i you know i question like i said i go back and forth on stuff and i question my own hearing sometimes yeah. and i you know i i wonder if i if i am just being swayed by the price of something or the fancy finish. Well, and there's or... a little something to that, right? I mean, it's a, it's an object you own and interact with. I don't, I don't think we have to like throw out the entire like, what's the build, what's the materials, all that. You know, it's like, I think it's it's great to 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 have a full ownership experience, right? Where it's like, I like how it looks, I like how it feels on my head, and I like how it sounds. Well, and that's something that I've come to appreciate too. Is like. I do care about the experience. I do care about the owner experience. And I do want my yeah. stuff to feel nice, you know, and look nice. Like, I, I do, like, I just, like, I got the bottlehead crack on my desk that I finished the wood for, you know, and I just, I look at it, and I yeah. like looking at it, and it looks sweet over there. And I'm like, yeah, I put that That's together. Great. Yeah, we'll have awesome. to talk about bottlehead <laughs> uh, uh, in a future one as well, and, and the DIY side of this hobby, which is really interesting as well. Uh, I guess we should probably start kind of wrapping this one up. Um, I guess I'd say, yeah, sure. What do you look? Should we do some gear updates and just yeah, let yeah. people know what we've got and idea. where we're at what and you, what we're what trying out to right now? What's on? What's in your head right now? Um, so I've got, I got an Alex on right now, um, and the reason for that is I had the Utopia somebody sent me, like a couple weeks ago, and. I just I love that thing, man. I was so hooked on it. That threw the bottlehead crack and I was I was just grooving. Nice. I just couldn't get enough of it. So I don't have the cash on hand to buy a Utopia right now, but I was like, oh, I'll get another Focal and, and see if it'll give me what I want out of it. I I mean I I put some Tacony fenestrated pads on it, which are more like the Utopias and you know, I got a good deal on it, so I'm I'm I mean, it's filling that niche for me right now of like an energetic, you know, dynamic headphone, the intimate. So it, it's no, it's not a utopia, but it's it's filling yeah. the niche for me right now. Did you yeah. have you got the utopia yeah, it's, yet? It's on Did you get one? Maybe maybe from our, our mutual friend, but um, I don't know which way mm -hmm. it bounced. Uh, but yes, I have a utopia right now that I'm listening to, and uh, it is a very exciting headphone. And I think you and I had talked at one point about being sort of maybe not the biggest Focal fans to date. Like we'd, we'd both like appreciated ones we'd heard, but never like fallen in love or wanted to keep them. Um, I don't, I don't think the Utopia is ultimately at, at that price point going to be the one thing I would keep um, TBD. But so far it, it has not, uh, it's really it's good, good though. Right? And I think, I think it's, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't have the same, it definitely doesn't have the same hesitation for me of like enjoying it as, you know, the Alex or the clear that I've tried or any of the other ones. Like sometimes I'd be like, eh, I don't know. But, um, the Utopia never had that for me. It was, it was love at first sound. It's, very, that thing it's for a me. very good headphone. It's got a great like dimensionality to it. That's really addictive. And the bass is really, really great. Um, and yeah, it's impactful. Mm -hmm. It's speedy. It's, it's definitely a, a punchy, well, punchy headphone. See, but I think too, like that's a situation where you know, last time I owned the Alex, I didn't have mm -hmm. the crack, and I love in these Focal headphones. Like the bass gets a little loose, but man, it's so lively and fun and organic on the well, crack. I told though, so I told a guy I know I think, that's pretty committed to the um, Utopias that I was getting a pair to listen to, um, and he was asking me about my chain because he's like, you know, you like they can get a little a little painful, a little shouty, a little too energetic with the wrong with the wrong chain in front of him. And I think tubes are a great way to drive them. Um, he's really committed yeah. to uh, two A3 based headphones. So uh, he had the um, Eddie Current aficionado and then switched to um, the Donald North Audio Stratus, both big boy two uh, A3 powered headphones. And the two A3 is a great tube. It's just one of these really magical musical mystery tour tubes that um i could see being kind of a perfect fit for that headphone of like it, you know it's like 
I feel like the utopia shows up at the party and it like had a few too many cups of coffee and it's like, it's really funny and you're like, you're laughing at it and having a great time, but you're also like, man, you need to (laughs) just take a beat. And he has like his, you know, first half a drink. And then you're like, oh, there he is. There's utopia. Well, and this, and this is, we've talked about before is how do you, like, how do you decide what's in your collection? Right. So I don't think the utopia wouldn't be the only Mm. thing I'd want in my collection and the Alex isn't the only thing I want in my collection, but cause I need some stuff that's more yeah. chill sometimes, you know what I mean? But I do the, what the utopia showed me was I want something <laughs> like that in my collection. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need to have something like that for if I just need to just go and just rock out for a little bit and just really get into things. So so I so I've got the the Alex here. Um, things I've got on hand to demo are I've got a 177X Bear. Um, I just I reviewed the 1770 Pro that hasn't come out yet. Um, I got an Aria Stealth Edition right now, which is you know a, a good complement to something from Focal because it's big and little and refined and you know I it's just a a very interesting signal and then uh outside of that i mean i've got my bifrost too and um and then i've got all these amps i've got i've got uh so i've got a singzer sa1 i've got the crack i've got uh x duo ta20 i've got a toping a90 i've got a burst and funk i got a burst and soloist so i'm kind of trying to like figure out my amp situation and just what do i want to keep for the long term if that even (laughs) is a thing for me so that that's that's my that's that's the stuff that I'm running through right now. It's mainly an amp. It's mainly an amp decision at this point for me. What about um, you? Yeah, I have wanted to try. Bur- I haven't tried anything from Burson, and I'm very curious. So I'm, I'll be interested to hear what you what you think of that stuff. I can. Yeah, I can send you okay. it when I'm done <laughs> with it. Sounds good. Are you doing a, a review <laughs> on on those guys? I mean, I will eventually. Here, I I actually I own. Um, I own all that stuff except for the X Duo, which was loaned to me by um, Apos. But outside of that, it's mine, so I can kind of take my time yeah. with it and, and and try it out. But but I tell you, I think I like the crack better uh, than all of them. Well, so. that that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I've never owned a crack, but um, I have owned many two based headphone amps, and and they're not. It doesn't. It's not like oh, all tube headphone amps are better than all solid state headphone amps by by any measure they're all different and all provide unique things but um yeah i i have a couple other bottlehead pieces and i've had a lot of uh, experience in the uh tube based amplification side and i it tends to i mean when you get it right it's just it's it's magical it really is um what am i listening to do you have a main do you have a main line Uh, no i don't have a main line um i have a stereo more which is a speaker amp that i listen to uh in mm-hmm. my bedroom with some very uh high efficiency uh, speakers it's a 2a3 thing i actually have uh used it to power headphones before out of the speaker taps with an attenuator box um which is fun sounds awesome but um the noise floor was just too high so it's kind of distracting um and then i also have a, a euros uh phono stage that i run in my main system uh, with my vinyl um so those are those are my bottlehead things right now um on the headphone side i'm listening to i'm wearing some grados some rs2 rs some type of grado i have to look at it yes <laughs> um those are interesting i i sort of i like the the what is it sr80 e or now it's sr80x um mm-hmm. i was like I just bought another one of those. That's another one of my it's second kind of a time gateway on a drug one. headphone. Just because I, I think it's like, it's kind of, it's just fun and, and different and, and, and sort of has a bit of a different perspective than a lot of things in its price point. Uh, someone was selling one for like 65 bucks and I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I, di- I didn't review it last time. I better just get it and try it. <laughs> so I wanted to Again. hear something a little up the line uh, in the greater line just to, I, I, it's a very interesting company and, it's fun to throw stones at them, but I, I kind of want to give them a chance. And also, like, I'm sort of comparing it to the um, HD650 as sort of uh, counterparts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So sort of Germany versus the USA and sort of like <laughs> clinical audio perfection versus like, ah, 
isn't this fun? Um, so that, that's fun. Uh, so anyway, I'll probably do a little review compare of those two. Um, and what else am I listening to? I am listening to the Utopia right now. Um, this as far is still is still my benchmark headphone, um, which is very unfair to anything that's you know half its price or a third of its price. So I don't try to I don't a b them. That's what that's, I don't a b. That's them, what I hear. I go back to it to sort of refresh my brain of what to look for and what I want to hear and not hear. Um, yeah, I don't know. Amp wise, I've got the audio GD NFB ba 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 amp. Um, which is, it's like a totally balanced architecture, very nice class A amp, really good parts, not expensive. I, I did a, a review on my... That was your vintage one, right? Yeah, your vintage that, comparison? Yeah, uh, uh, Molinier one, Schitt's Molinier one. Um, just in terms of like how much great, like really powerful balanced amps there are out there now in the used market for, you know, in that 300 to four hundred dollar price point like you can get some just ridiculously good gear um so those both both fit in that category well yeah i mean that's what's i mean you know it's kind of happening in the audio industry here where it's like perennial releases you know so if you don't mind getting something that's a couple years old and isn't the latest and greatest like you can get some phenomenal gear for yeah. nothing almost you know very very reasonable prices and i know like what the toping a90 was it's maybe like a year old two two years at most and that was what when it first came out like 550 yeah, something like that 600 bucks i bought mine yeah. for 300 thing bucks like the bell of, like you know, it's the like all the right it's like the best measuring and whatever you know but it's because they're releasing so many of them it's just the prices yeah. are just falling so low which is great for people <laughs> yeah. like you and me <laughs> you want to try a lot of stuff and you have a just a you know a modicum of patience <laughs> you can hold off for 12 <laughs> months uh you know the world's rooster and that's what i think is so like that's what my takeaway from last year is just like old gear is competes with new gear and so i think when you're trying to figure out what you want and what's going to be the right set of stuff in your system you don't look at like what got released this year like stop that <laughs> like look at what's been released in the past five years or further back i mean i had amps for my two channel stuff that were like 50 years old and sounded awesome so it's like uh well mm -hmm. maybe the oldest one no yeah for like 40 45 something years old. like so i i think if, if people can let go a little bit of like that latest and greatest and having to have that new fresh from the factory smell when they open something then i feel like you're pleasure per dollar ratio <laughs> in this hobby goes up exponentially um, for sure. Well, and you don't feel like you're yeah. trapped in it either. You know, normally if you bought like a flagship headphone, like you're kind of trapped in it unless you want to take a gigantic yeah. loss, you know, if you bought it new, but bought it on the used market, you can turn around and probably get most of your money back out of it and have the experience under your real. belt. <laughs> yeah. For sure. All right. Well, I think that's a good. I think that was a good run first for a first, for sure. first, first podcast yeah. attempt. So I guess right? we'll probably throw it out um, to anyone who happens to hear this. I was going to say anyone who happens to see this, but you'll see nothing. Um, but if but if you hear this and it and it sounds interesting and you you want to hear more, let us know. And you know, I think some of the topics we've sort of got penciled in is you know we've talked a lot about synergy and system building, and so we'll probably talk about that in the future. You know figuring out what you like is I think a topic we're both kind of passionate about. And I think we both have some thoughts and opinions on kind of the forum and reviewer ecosystem, um, that we, yeah, just, just how to, how to interpret reviews maybe would be yeah a nice way to put it. <laughs> um, no, Jaden, <laughs> us, what? Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, lots of stuff coming down the pipe. I think we're also interested in, you know, probably talking to folks, um, other, other, uh, people who might attend our, uh, audiophile addicts meetings, um, from either the industry or just other hobbyists like ourselves. So, well, in what kind of a format do you think is, is good? Like we'd be interested to hear. So these will go up on YouTube just cause that's what we've got going right now. But, you know, we're thinking typical podcast stuff. You know, if if you 
are you interested in getting involved? Is this something you'd want to listen to live? You know, would you want a Zoom that you could hang out in? Or, you know, we've looked at some podcasting services where people could like call in. Is that something you'd be interested in? Or just, you know, YouTube live or what, you know, just we're, we're kind of just feeling out like what, what do people want? What would work well for this type of format? And, and that where people where I think we're both on the same page where we feel like it'd be nice if we could get some more people involved to chime in questions, comments, things like that. Yeah, so for sure. Um, cool. Well, if you made it to the end, congratulations. Uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, definitely appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, the time with your ears when you could have been listening to great music on great headphones, but here you are spending time with us. Um, cool. Well, happy new year to all. And, uh, happy new year, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see you Sounds soon. Good.